Everyone, good morning. You have reached the Human K channel. Today, we're going to talk about the interesting topic of equity theory and how it helps us understand how people act in groups. Equity theory was created by John Stacy Adams in 1963. It tries to explain how people's psychology affects how they see unfairness and how that affects how they feel about and act in their organizations. To understand what equity theory is all about, we must first look at the three theories it was built on. The social exchange theory, the social comparison theory, and the theory of cognitive dissonance. Social exchange theory says that our relationships with other people are based on how we feel about the costs and benefits of being in these relationships. Also, social comparison theory helps us understand how people figure out how the costs and benefits of these social exchange relationships are shared. By comparing their own inputs and outputs to those of others, people can figure out how fair their relationships with others are. Now, let's look at what equity theory's main goals are. It tries to explain how people decide if a relationship is fair and how their behavior changes when they think a relationship isn't fair. People look at four main factors that affect equity, result, input, person, and others. Inputs are the costs or contributions that people make to relationships, and outputs are the benefits and rewards that come from these connections. Outcomes can come in many shapes and sizes, such as cash rewards, natural results of behavior, social and symbolic benefits, and status. Inequity happens when a person sees a difference between what they put in and what they get out and what they see other people in similar situations doing. The goal of equity theory's framework, which was made in the context of social exchange, was to bring together and explain several smaller theories in social psychology. Equity theory helps us understand why people do the things they do and how they react to the relationships they are in by putting all of our previous knowledge under one umbrella idea. Now, we'll learn more about equity theory by looking at its five main ideas. These rules give us important information about how people deal with unfairness in social exchange relationships. Let's begin. The first concept says that the way people treat each other is the norm. In these kinds of interactions, people expect to be rewarded for what they do. When people in a group reward people who treat others properly and punish people who treat others unfairly, this is a good thing. Moving on to the second principle, we can figure out how fair something is by comparing our inputs and outputs with those of other people in social exchange relationships. When the ratio of inputs to outputs is the same as that of others, it seems fair. The third principle says that people will think something isn't fair if rewards aren't given out in proportion to efforts in the same way. When a person's inputs and outputs are mentally different from what other people get, this is called inequity. In family interactions, unfairness can happen when one person doesn't get enough or gets too much. Moving on, the fourth principle says that unfairness makes people feel bad inside. This makes them feel bad because their own results don't match up with the results of others, which they use as a point of reference. Both negative inequity, not getting enough rewards, and positive inequity, getting too many rewards, cause grief, with more inequity causing more distress. Last, the fifth concept of equity theory is about how people react to what they think is unfair. To help people understand these responses better, the theory describes seven ways that people can deal with stressful events. Let's look at each of these ways to deal with stress by using examples to show how they work. Compensation means trying to make things fair again by giving someone else more rewards or perks. For example, a worker who thinks there is unfairness at work might go above and beyond their normal tasks to help a coworker they think is not getting enough credit. This act of making up for the perceived unfairness is meant to make the connection fair and balanced again. Self-deprivation is when a person reduces their own benefits or inputs on purpose to make them more like those of another party. In a group project, for example, if one team member thinks they got more rewards than they deserved, they may voluntarily lower their contribution or share of the rewards in order to make the team feel more fair. Devaluation of the other party's input is to mentally downplay or devalue the efforts or inputs of the person who seems to be getting more rewards. For example, if a student thinks that a classmate is getting better results for the same amount of work, they might say that their classmate isn't very smart or that their success is due to outside factors. By making the other person's opinion less important, people try to explain the unfairness and protect their own sense of justice. Self-affirmation is when a person does things or looks for feedback that boosts their sense of self-worth and importance, regardless of what they think is unfair. For example, if an employee feels underpaid compared to their coworkers, they might do things outside of work that boost their self-esteem, 
like following a hobby or getting praise in other parts of their lives. This self-affirmation helps people keep a good view of themselves despite what they see as unfairness. When someone denies responsibility, they minimize or ignore their role in the unfair situation. For example, if a person gets more benefits than their peers for doing the same amount of work, they may say that their success was due to luck or good circumstances instead of recognizing any personal advantage. Denying blame helps people get rid of the feelings of guilt or unfairness that come with it. People justify unfairness when they come up with reasons or explanations to make the unequal spread of rewards seem right. For example, if a manager's pay is a lot higher than that of their subordinates, they might say that it's because they have more tasks or are more qualified. People try to keep a sense of fairness in spite of unequal results by trying to explain them away. Retaliation means getting back at or taking action against the person or group seen as causing the unfairness. This can show up in different ways, like addressing the person directly, acting in a passive-aggressive way, or even trying to get back at them. As an example, an employee who thinks their boss favors another employee wrongly might spread rumors about their coworker or try to mess up their work. It's important to remember that these ways of dealing with stress are not mutually exclusive. People can use more than one strategy at the same time or over time, based on the situation and their own preferences. By knowing these principles and the different ways people react to unfairness, we can learn a lot about how people act in social exchange relationships. Even though the theory has been used in many different areas, it is important to think about the subtle things that can change how well it works. Equity theory has been used in workplace psychology, economic psychology, personal relationships, and information systems in important ways. It has been used to look at how workers' views of fairness affect their actions, both good and bad. Also, fairness perception has been shown to affect job demands, success, and satisfaction at work. The use of negative behavior as a way to deal with a feeling of unfairness has also been looked into. Equity theory has also been used to try to predict things like wage differences and trends in unemployment. In the field of information systems, it has shed light on how users interact with each other, including how wants can be met fairly and how prices can be set fairly. The way people feel about online justice indirectly affects how they create value together, while price fairness improves how people feel about the quality and value of a product or service, which motivates them to act. But it's important to realize that when equity theory has been used in different places, the effects have not always been the same. For example, a study that compared how car dealers in the Netherlands and the US reacted to positive inequity found that Dutch dealers thought both negative and positive inequity were bad, while US dealers only thought negatively about negative inequity. Also, different cultures had different ideas about how important fairness was. Countries with collectivist cultures have different levels of distributive justice perception. As for what people don't like about equity theory, it has been said that it oversimplifies the moral basis of people's behavior in social exchange situations. Critics say that you can't just look at the inputs and outputs of social relationships because they involve so many things, like nature, resources, circumstances, and differences between people. The idea works best in more economic and competitive settings, where people try to get the most out of their own lives. Also, equity theory has been criticized for not taking into account how personal and national differences can have a big effect on how people see fairness. To deal with this, researchers came up with the equity sensitivity construct, which acknowledges that people have different ideas about what is fair based on their own values. This idea divides people into those who care about equity, those who are sensitive to equity, and those who think they are entitled. Also, the theory's ideas about how to deal with inequality have been looked at closely. When people choose to be under awarded, they may be more driven to improve their performance than to reduce the amount of effort they put in. Also, the one-dimensional way of measuring benefits has been criticized because it doesn't take into account how people evaluate things. In order to deal with some of these problems, Experts have looked into how fairness can be broken down into procedural justice and distributive justice. It has been found that these aspects lead to positive feelings and actions, while feelings of unfairness lead to emotional exhaustion. As we wrap up our conversation today, it's important to remember that equity theory is not a general idea, even though it has made important contributions. Its impacts and uses are greatly changed by cultural and ideological differences.